Today we're going to start on 8.3. On 8.2 we did, or well, 8.1, what did we do? On 8.1 we actually kind of learned how to do a significance test. We talked about what the p-value was, why we calculate it, and then we compare it with the alpha, then we get to either reject the hoe or fail to reject the hoe, and we talked about the mechanics of how a significance testing works. And then in 8.2, we actually did that using or for a proportion, right? In proportion, we used a normal CDF. We used normal distribution, correct? Or a approximation, right? And now we're going to do the mean. And in the mean, if you remember when we were doing the confidence intervals, we did not use a normal distribution. What did we use? We used the... T distribution, remember we used a T distribution? And the reason we didn't, we couldn't use a normal distribution was? Because there was no other. There was no sigma. We didn't know the standard deviation of the population, right? Because when we're doing the confidence interval and in proportion, we have the handy dandy equation here, right? So we did not have to know this. As long as we knew this, we were able to find out what it was, okay? Well, in the mean, I don't have this handy-dandy equation. So if I don't know what the sigma is, I can't use a normal distribution. Okay, this is exactly why, again, we're going to be using the T distribution, okay? So let's go to page 387, 387, so we're in part one. Testing a claim about mu with sigma not known. And most of the time, this is what's going to be your case. You're not going to know what the standard deviation is. Okay? So, let's go to the key elements. Use a formal hypothesis test to test a claim about a mu. Then you have the sample size. You have the sample standard deviation. You have the sample mean and the population mean, okay? So how would you find the sample standard deviation and the sample mean? This is nothing more than you populating the L1 and doing a one bar stats, right? To find out what the sample deviation was and the sample mean was. Well, you can do that very simply, right? Okay, and then we go the requirements. The, simple, the sample has to be a random sample, Either or both of these conditions are satisfied. Either the population is normally distributed, okay? So the population that you're taking the sample from, if you can somehow tell me that this is a normal distribution, okay, I'm good to go, okay? If it's not, then I look for n to be greater than 30. Okay, in other words, the sample size that you're taking, if it's greater than 30, what does that let me to do? What does that let me do? What happens when n becomes greater than 30? It's a normal distribution. Why? Because it is greater than 30. Because it's greater than 30. Because of the central limit theorem. Right? Remember the central limit theorem? We actually did this. It didn't matter what this population distribution was. It could be anything. As long as your n was greater than 30, the sample becomes the normal distribution. Okay? All right? So that's that. Blah, blah, blah. So where are we at? We, okay, so either one of them, because either the population is normally distributed, distributed or n is greater than 30. So, if I did not know whether this was a normal distribution, and my n is less than 30, then what do I do? What happens then? What happened when we were doing the confidence intervals? What did we have to do? There was a specific step that was required for us. Do you remember this? We actually had to do a dot plot or a histogram. And what were we looking for? Outliers or great skewness, right? As long as they were not greatly skewed and there were no outliers, we could say what? 
eh, looks good enough, we'll call it normal. Remember they're doing this? Remember doing this when we were doing the confidence interval? Okay, so if you go to the bottom right underneath there, we have the test statistic. The test statistic is, the test statistic is equal to, what do we have? We have the sample mean minus the proportion of the population. And then we're gonna use the standard deviation of the sample divided by that. Okay, this is our, remember we used the Z when we were doing the proportions, right? For the mean, we're gonna use this. What was the significance difference between the T distribution and the normal distribution? Anybody remember that? Remember we had the normal distribution that looks like this, and then we had the T distribution that looks like this. We had fatter tails, the tails were fatter. Right, tails are fatter. And as your degree of freedom goes up, the T distribution actually approaches the normal distribution. How do you calculate the degree of freedom, anybody? N minus one. N minus one, exactly. So whatever your sample was, it's one minus that. Okay. So that's in a nutshell we did. Can so the critical values, blah 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 blah. Okay, we're good. Put the page. Requirement of normality or n greater than greater than thirty. We talked about that. Important properties of the student t distribution. Number one, student t distribution is different for different sample sizes. Why is it different? What changes when the sample size changes? The degree of freedom changes, right? The degree of freedom changes, and you are going to approach the normal distribution. Okay. Right. Number two, student t distribution has the same general bell shape with a wider, its wider shape reflects the greater variability, so this is the fatter tails. Number three, student t distribution has a mean of zero, okay. Standard deviation is one. And then standard deviation of the student t distribution with the sample size, and it's greater than one, okay, which has, okay. Number five, as the sample size n gets larger, so the distribution gets closer to a normal distribution. Okay. All right, so let's see if you can do the p-value method. So let's see if we can do the p-value method using this. Example number one. Uh, where we at? Author obtained uh, times of sleep for randomly selected adult subjects included in the National Health and Nutrition Examination Study. And those times when hours are there, so a sample size of 12, okay, and if you run the numbers, you get, okay, again, where did we get these numbers from? How would you get the numbers from? L1. You just populate them in L1 and do a one bar stats, right? If you did that, you would get a X bar of 6.83 and an S of 1.99, okay? So let's use the p-value method and see if it's significant or not. So I'm gonna get what? This and 6.833 minus, what's my mu here? Does it tell me what the mu is? Well, the mu is 6.83, no, no, so mu is seven. Yeah, those, so we're testing the claim that the mean amount of sleep is less than seven hours. Mean was seven. Standard deviation was what? One point nine nine two square root of what was my n? Twelve. Twelve, right? And if you do this, you will find the t to become. Is the t going to be positive or negative? Negative. Why is it going to be negative? Negative is correct. Why? Because the top is negative, right? Because this is less than seven, right? So it's gonna be negative, right? And if I do that, I'm gonna get negative 
negative 0 0.290. So in the t distribution, this was zero, and I'm running at negative 29 here. So I need to find this guy here. All right, how would I find that? Actually, you would go to your back of the book, right? Let's go to the back of the book. T distribution. Whoa, whoa, where's the table? Let me find the table for me. Where's it at? So we're on page 686, page 686. What's my degree of freedom? 11. 11, so I, I am at 11. And where are we at? Uh, we can't use this, can we? Because, yeah, we can't use this. So let's go ahead and open up our calculators. So we're gonna do a TCDF, right? A TCDF. So we're gonna go to stacks, test, stacks, TCDF. Actually, it should be a T like this for you guys. TCDF, did you find it? Second bars, TCDF. So in the TCDF, I have to find the lower boundary. So lower boundary is going to be over here, right? Somewhere the way over here. So we'll just say uh, negative 100. Sounds good. To the upper level, upper, which is negative 0.29. And then I have to put the degree of freedom, which is 11. If I do that, what do I get? 0. 0.3886. What, what, what? 0. 0.3886. 0. 0.3886. 0. 0.3886? Yeah. 0. 0.3886, which is what the book's got also. So, my p value is this. Therefore, I get to do what? Is it greater than alpha or less than alpha? What's alpha? 0 0.05, 5 percent, right? So this is greater than alpha, correct? No, no. no. it's negative. What do you mean it's negative? It's not negative. Why it's an negative area sign? right here. It's an equal sign. It's an equal sign. Uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so this is greater than 0.05. P value is greater than alpha, therefore I do not get to reject the hoe. I failed to reject the hoe. Dang it. Okay, so it's no good, right? Okay. So there you go. So, there is, so step seven says because the p value is greater than, we failed to reject the hypothesis. Okay, flip the page. And I think we will stop right here. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do the. Let's go ahead and do the t test. So let's go to stat test and see if you can pull up the t test. Yeah. What are we testing here? We are testing that. So you have to put. You have to be. You have to put these into L1, right? Let's put them into L. So put your data into L1. The four eight four four eight six nine stuff. What page are you? Stat edit. Go to stat edit. No, what page are you? Oh, I am page three eighty eight. Example one.
Okay, so you got it. You're all you're in there. You're all in there. You edit everything and you, you put everything in there. Then you go to now t test or stat test, and then t test, and then for your data you're gonna put what? L one. To be data, right? And then you put L1. L1. Yeah, it's L1 already. Yeah, yeah. We just need the X. We need the seven. Yeah, the seven, right? And you're testing less than seven, right? Yeah. Okay. And you go all the way down and you get a p-value of what? You should go ahead and calculate all the way through. Oh. Point three eight eight six, right? Which is what we got using this stuff, right? But now that you have the T test, you don't have to calculate the TCDF. It does it for you. It gives you the p value straight up, right? And you just use that, read off that p value, and compare it to whatever your alpha was. See that? Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right.